Finally, 2020 is over. We did it. We completed another lap around our Patreon star. Which makes us be in lap number 2021 now. Or as normal people would call it, the year 2021 AD. Or CE, but more on that later. We, of course, know that the 2021 in our lap count is marked as that thanks to the appearance of Christ. But have you ever wondered why we do it like that? I mean, people had to use something before Jesus was even a thing right? For example, if we look at the founding of Rome, we see that it took place in 753 BC, but the fall of Rome was in 395 AD and it's not easy to actually see how long this is. We have to do things like math. Who, who came up with this and why? Well, there is a reason and it's not only because religion. Actually, it's just because religion, but with a little more context. Let me explain. This is how we came up with the BC and AD for a year counting. But first, let's see how it actually works. As many of you know, time is money. Wait, that's not right. Relative. I mean, time is relative. Which means that our understanding of the passing of time is actually dependent on our frame of reference. So, if we want to keep track of years, we need to put a reference point somewhere and start from there. Hebrews, for example, put theirs at what they believe is the birth of the world at around 3761 BC, so today they are at 5781 AM, which is Anno Mundi, the year of the world. And we find this type of reference placement from many cultures, which tells us how important has been for humanity the ability to track time and historical events. And, as you may know, our current most widely adopted reference point is located here, in what we thought was the year in which Jesus Christ was born. And here are two problems. First, not all the world is Christian, and second, we still had to use something before we invented this, right? Well, yeah. And it was a complete mess. It was very common in many civilizations to use what we call regnal years which basically consists in counting years at the beginning of the reign of the current king, consul, pharaoh, you name it. And after their time is up, you basically start over again. And again, Romans did this, so a year would be something like the year of the consulship of C. Julius Caesar and M. Antonius, which sure is a mouthful. If that sounds like a mess, I told you so. If you wanted to count the years for whatever reason, you needed to have a list of kings with their respective years of reign. And many times, different sources had conflicting data, and that is if you're lucky and a list still exists. So I hope you can see the problems with this system. Because this guy did. Dionysius Exigus. He was the person responsible for our current calendar era. He was a monk from Scythia Minor, he lived in Rome and did a lot of things, but what interests us the most are his calculations for computus. As you may remember from my horrible first video, computus was the process to calculate the dates of Easter. Dionysius wanted to calculate the coming dates for years to follow, but didn't want to use Anno Diocletani to do it, which was the method the Church of Alexandria used to count years, whose Easter tables were the norm at the time. Dionysius hated the idea of counting years since Emperor Diocletian, because, well, he was an asshole towards Christians. So, by using Roman dating systems and references from the Bible, he was able to pinpoint how many years had passed since the birth of Christ. Just as a disclaimer, it's not actually known how he actually did this. But with that, when he published the next table for Easter, he wrote it with something like X year of the consulship of Probus Junior, which takes place 525 years since the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is exactly where AD comes from. It's an acronym from Anno Domini, from the phrase Anno Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, which translates to in the year of our Lord. And no, AD doesn't mean after death. Sorry, it's, it's Anno Domini. Okay, now we know the man responsible for our calendar era. But these were the Middle Ages. Information and change traveled slowly and adoption rate was not great. We have to jump to the year 731 AD, where Saint Bede the Venerable, a monk from the Kingdom of Northumbria, made the next push. 
He worked in many chronologies and saw the problem with using regnal years, so he decided to use Dionysius's method of Anno Domini. Thanks to his works, AD began to gain traction and in the 8th and 9th centuries it started to see wide adoption across England, France and Italy. But it was not the same with BC. Beat used Anno ex ante incarnationem dominicam, at least twice, which means in ex the year before the incarnation of our Lord. There was no standard to name years before AD, and it took almost another thousand years to popularize the phrase Antechristum by another Dionysius actually. And as you may see, Antechristum is still Latin and it doesn't resemble BC yet. Oh no, for that we have none other than Sir Isaac Newton to thank for. The Reformation strikes again! And not only Catholic icons were seen as persona non grata, but also Latin. So, in his chronology of ancient kingdoms, amended, we can see him used before Christ with the annotation, the times are set down in years before Christ. And so, you have one of the first uses of BC in the year... Um, 1, 5 plus 2... 1728! With that information, if you were asked how AD and BC were adopted across Europe, you could simply reply with, because religion. But, if you were asked the same for the rest of the world, it would sound more like, because empire. Starting with the discovery of the New World, European nations began playing a game that went like... Hey, what's there? I don't know, but there is mine now. So, by planting their flags in whatever place they found, they brought their own systems with them, which of course included their calendars, which of course all use Anno Domini. If we move a couple of centuries and by any chance you are not colonized yet, you find yourself in a position where if you want to trade with European colonies, or Europe itself, you would have to adopt their own systems. And if you didn't want to trade with them, well, you, you couldn't do that, no, they'd make you, by force. So, by playing Empire, the rest of the world was made to adopt the use of Anno Domini. The thing is, not all the world is Christian, so many people chose to use the acronyms BCE and CE for our years, which both stand for Before Common Era and Common Era. This is the preferred nomenclature today, because it doesn't have a religious connotation attached to it and you could consider it universal, but not that much, because it still uses the birth of Jesus as a reference point for counting. And as much universal and widely adopted we think it is, the old calendar systems are actually still in use to this day, for religious and traditional purposes. Jews still use Anomundi for their religious affairs, as well as Muslims and Hindus use theirs. Because again, time is relative, our eras and calendars are not universal because our points of reference are different. And that makes BC and AD just another point of reference. Our most widely adopted point of reference, yeah, but just one of many. Heck, you could even argue that, in the great scheme of the universe, not even our points of reference are relevant, we're just a speck of dust in the arc glass that is the universe. And with that nihilistic note to end the video, that was how we came up with BC and AD. I really hope that you enjoyed that video, this was our first video of 2021, so I just expect that we can see great things coming this year. I'm improvising, I have no script, um, what comes next? I'll leave a like, uh, subscribe, uh, hit the bell, um, leave a comment telling me what you think and what other topics you would like for me to make a video about. Um, what, what else? I, I'm not really good at improvising. Uh, share this video with all your friends if you liked it. Yeah, that, that would really help me, and I think I should end this, but I, I think I have one more thing left. No, I don't. Well, thanks for sticking this long if, if you are, actually. So, I hope to see you in the next one, have a nice day, and goodbye.